In the next 10 minutes, you will learn a legitimate method using AI to shrink 30 hours of literature review research into less than one hour. It falls within the ethical guidelines for AI use in academia. You can use this method right away in your research process and start saving time. Back in 2022, December, when ChatGPT was first announced, universities were thinking of banning it. But in July 2023, Russell Group Universities, Oxford, Cambridge, and all the other major universities in the UK issued the first ethical guidelines for using AI in academia. Fast forward, end of 2024, here we are, and all the major universities in the world are training students in how to use AI in their research, in their studies, effectively and ethically. Problem is, we are kind of updated with this training because AI is advancing so fast and our training is still stuck around you know five best prompts and tips and tricks or general ideas like you know use AI to explore concepts but but how it's time we take our training to the next level where we start thinking in terms of strategies strategies for interacting with AI tools. Strategies that can help us go from point A to point B, a series of conversations, a chain of commands. And here I'm going to share you one such method, I call it curiosity mapping. Let's start. One of the very fundamental things in a research is a conceptual map. It's a basis on which your literature review is built. And it is an extremely time-consuming process to develop. It can take weeks, it can take months. But what if there is a much faster and legitimate way of developing a conceptual map? That's what we are going to see today. We'll be using an AI tool called Claude, not ChatGPT, because I have personally found Claude to be far more effective than ChatGPT in this case. So one of the main areas in my research is about the connection between video journaling and self-therapy. So the idea is, can you talk to camera or record yourself and could that be used as some form of a journal and could that have some sort of a mental health benefits? So these are two broad disciplines. One is art and the other is mental health. And I want to start by developing a broad conceptual map for this topic. So start with a broad question. I want to know the connection between mental health and art from an academic perspective. First point in art. I'm specifying what kind of answer I'm looking. You know, I'm saying in an academic perspective. You know, I could I could ask, okay, explain to me as if I'm a five-year-old and the answer will be different. But since here, I'm asking, give it to me in an academic perspective. And there you go, Cloud is already giving me an answer. And as you can see, it's a very detailed and very well-structured answer. And you know, it's not just a summary of things, it's it's, it's given us a proper answer. It says, you know, it talks about the intersection of mental health and art, academic review. It talks about key research areas, creative process and mental health, art viewing and mental well-being. You know. And then it talks about the research methodologies being used, research directions, challenges and limitations, and some key references. That's great already. Already I'm, I'm getting an overview of things. Okay, now what? I ask, you know, I, I go through this answer, I take my time, and then I, you know, the, something catches my attention. I'm like, okay, um, you say somewhere here, there's a psychological benefit to art, and that is enhanced self-awareness and emotional insight. That's the answer I got in cloud. So I'm curious, two things. First, what kind of art are we talking here? And two, are there any supporting evidence for this claim that, you know, art brings you enhanced self-awareness and emotional insight? And Claude gives me that answer as well in a very detailed way. Uh, it says, let me elaborate that point. It talks about the evidence from peer-reviewed research. It talks about one particularly interesting finding, different materials and all that. So this keeps going. So this is the first component of this strategy snowballing a kind of back and forth questioning so you know you ask a question you get an answer and based on that answer you take one section of that answer one sentence from that answer and you say explore you know, i want to know more about this and you get an, another answer for that a detailed answer you select one section of that answer and say explore this further so the snowballing approach. You keep going based on the answer you get. You keep going, you keep going, you keep going. 
as much as you want. You can always branch out, you can expand on any answer you get. Now, this is the first component. Then comes a point where all these answers I've been getting up to this point has been about fine arts, different materials, the kind of painting, watercolor, clay. But now I want to take this discussion into the next stage. So I'm asking, okay, fine, but what about other art forms like music, writing, dance? Because that's where I want to guide this conversation. So this is the second component of this strategy, that original questions, original thinking. This is where your intellect actually comes into play. Okay, and you have to give that input. So first step is snowballing. Ask a question, get another answer, ask another question, keep going. Then ask your, your original question. Where do you want to take this conversation? Is it going in this direction? And change that direction by asking an original question. That is the second component. So I'm asking this original question. What about other forms of art? And then comes, let me explain how different forms of art contribute and it talks about expressive arts and mental health so it's talking about music talking about dance movement talking about writing poetry etc etc and and in that answer there is an interesting thing that claude says you know talks about journaling okay journaling okay we are getting closer elaborate on this and there you go research on journaling again see Every answer Cloud gives is elaborate. It's not just, you know, some snippets. It's a proper, well-defined answer. Each answer is kind of an academic paper that's written in an easy to understand uh, way with key ideas in, in bullet points. So already I'm learning a lot and I'm already understanding how these things connect with each other. So this is the good thing about this process of question and answers. In the other method, we are doing a keyword search strategy. Keyword search, yeah, but by now you know it's outdated, right? The question and answer method, connections are being formed in your brain because it's, it's an interaction. You know, that's, the, that's the best thing about this kind of AI tools. It enables you, it, it helps you to do that Q&A sessions, okay? And it's incredibly helpful in learning any new concept. So I keep going, I keep going, I talk about journaling, it talks about journaling more. And again, we do the snowballing, we do the original thinking. Incredible information that would take me ages to collect in the traditional way of uh, web-based search. And then I ask another original question. I'm asking, what if a person was to edit all these uh, video journals and make it into a movie? Which area of film theory that this movie could be connected. Now I'm asking for connection. I'm asking for connection between two completely different research areas. Okay. This is another interesting thing you can ask to AI. Ask for connection. Ask for underlying philosophies. Ask for relation between concepts. These are different ways of asking original question. I, I would like to call it Socratic method because is the approach Socrates uh, apparently used to do. So anyway, it's brilliant. It's not even one hour and I have gone through all these various research ideas and research concepts and everything. And now I come to the third component of this strategy, the final component of this strategy, which is synthesizing. And this is where the mind blowing part comes. If you are a PhD researcher, there is a course that I have made combining all these strategies that I have developed over the years that shows you the legitimate ways that you can use AI in various stages of your research. Check it out. It will take two minutes, but that two minutes just might save you 300, 500 hours of your research time. So check it out. Two minutes. Okay. Now, now let's go to the mind blowing part, the synthesis part. I'm asking Cloud, okay, we've been having this chat so far. Give me a synthesis. You know, synthesis all the idea that we have discussed so far and give it to me. And Cloud gives me this. The evolution from art therapy to therapeutic filmmaking, a conceptual synthesis. You know, it categorizes every, you know, every idea that's been discussed so far. It talks about core therapeutic mechanisms, progressive complexity of self-reflection, evolution of documentation, but this is not the mind-blowing part. The mind-blowing part is what comes now. Now, this is something that only Cloud can do as of now. 
ChatGPT is not as good as cloud in this case, okay? I'm asking, okay, now, can you create a conceptual map or a flowchart showing the hierarchy and connection between topics discussed so far? What do we get? Look at that. Look at that. It starts with the broad area of art and mental health and a hierarchical image that clearly marks everything so well structured. Imagine how many hours it would take you to reach just this stage. And we are just at the very broad beginning stage of our research, you know. And it's been just one hour and we already have this hierarchical structure. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. I'm asking one more. Okay, forget the hierarchy now. Give me a linear diagram, you know. Start with the first idea uh, that we discussed and show me the development of the ideas. Again, visually. And there you go. I mean, this is incredible. It, you know, look at that. Look at that map that Claude has created. How the whole thing, the ideas, everything is well structured, organized. This is something that only AI can do as of now. And if you are not using it, you are missing out. If you think AI is unethical, you haven't actually understood there are legitimate ways of using AI. If you think, oh, I've tried AI, but it doesn't work. No, AI is fast moving and you just haven't figured the proper method to it. So one last thing I'm asking, okay, give me a reference list. And there you go. It gives me full reference for all the articles and books and others that's been discussed so far in this discussion. Now, at this point, double check. I mean, cloud is pretty accurate, but still, I would say, anytime AI gives you a reference, double check. Use Google Scholar Chrome extension. That's the easiest way of uh, checking if a reference is valid or not. Just copy it and populate in Google Scholar Chrome extension and if the link appears, that means that reference is legitimate. You can just click on it and there you go. You open that article. Now you can download it and you can take it further. Now the good thing is, in this method, not only you already have a, a beginning of a conceptual map, I call it curiosity mapping just because it's the mapping of areas of curiosity. Okay, it's not the final conceptual map, it's the first version. Now, the good thing is now you can go searching and exploring with a map in your head. You already have some idea, you already know how these things connect, the areas you need to explore. In the traditional way, you are going in blind. You, you are going with a set of keywords and, you know, opening random articles and, you know, copy pasting things, hoping that somehow you will find your way through it. So, here it is. Start using this, start saving time and check out the course. Definitely, don't forget and uh, share this video with your friends. Let them also understand about these tools and strategies. Sharing is caring. Thank you for watching.